Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. A lot of new attachments have been coming to Rainbow Six, and it's time we break them down and take a closer look at how they work. We've had a few new attachments come into the game this season, and I've actually been putting this off for a while. When the angled grip first came out, it was not working as intended at first, so I had to wait for them to make the change to that. Then they made that change, and as I was about to get ready to do that video, they announced that they would be coming out with the muzzle brake and the extended barrel. And then when those came out, it was said that the muzzle brake wasn't working as intended, so then they were going to release the hot fix on that, and then that got put out last week. So now I think we're ready to go ahead and talk about the attachments in the game. And you know, it's kind of hard from a content creator's perspective to cover attachments when they're coming out and they're not actually working like they're supposed to and then they get changed and updated as the game goes on. I mean, when that muzzle brake came out, it was just dominating everything before they brought it back down to what it was supposed to be. If I had made content based on how it was performing before they made the adjustment to it, then everything I said was gonna become inaccurate. That's just something that I've gotta kinda challenge the testing on a little bit more and say, guys, you gotta do a better job of making sure that if you say this attachment functions in this way, then make sure that it really does. But enough about that. Let's break down the attachments themselves. Some of these attachments are a little bit down to personal preference because although we have a general idea of how they're supposed to work, the way that it actually comes across in some of the weapon handling does change a little bit. So sometimes a muzzle brake may not always be the best thing for a certain circumstance or a compensator may not always be the best thing across the board for every weapon. So first we're gonna start by breaking down the way these attachments work as a general concept. So let's begin with the underbarrel attachments. This is gonna be the vertical foregrip as well as the angled foregrip. The vertical foregrip has been around since the beginning of the game's launch and we all kind of know what this does. Putting this on your gun helps you to control your recoil. Anything that stabilizes your shot pattern when sending lead downwind is always gonna be a benefit. But in this season, we got the introduction of the angled foregrip and this works a little bit differently. The purpose of this attachment is to alter the ADS time needed. So when you're going from a hip fire and locking on to that zoomed in shot, the transition time between those two states is reduced. It's not by a lot, it's actually fractions of a second. Now, fractions of a second may not sound like much, but it actually can translate into the difference between winning and losing a gunfight. This attachment is a little bit harder to quantify versus the vertical foregrip. On that one, there's really no reason not to put a vertical foregrip on a gun, by and large. However, with the angled foregrip, it's really gonna come down to your play style defining whether or not this is something you wanna use. The reason being is that while you will snap to your ADS quicker, you have less overall recoil control. The trade-off there is target acquisition for stability. Now, if you're moving a lot, if you are a quick mover, if you rush the objective hard, or if you are an aggressive roamer and you're moving all over the place, if you're sprinting around, if you're a light armor character and you just have high mobility, then this is probably a really optimal attachment for you. Then again, if you stay further back and you're locked in on your ACOG down long hallways and you're not really moving from position and you're just waiting for somebody to pop out and you kind of tend to stay already scoped in, you're going to see more benefit out of the vertical foregrip than you would out of the angled. In this case, your overall play style is really going to dictate which of the two is going to perform better for you. Then of course you have the laser sight. This is something you can put on pretty much every gun in the game. This is an attachment that only affects hip fire. It doesn't really do anything for aiming in general. It's only for hip fire. And what it does is it sort of reduces the spread of which your shots will kind of scatter around. You're gonna see the most effective use out of this in short range close quarters weapon where hip fire is gonna be something that's gonna come up a lot more. Primarily that's gonna come down to your shotguns and pistols. If you hip fire shotguns a lot, you can get a little bit of benefit out of this. I would not personally put this on most of the automatic weapons. I'm just gonna be aiming down the sights on those anyway. Your laser can be seen before you expose yourself so enemies will know where you are before you've even shown yourself to them. Additionally, you also have that really bright red glare that kind of appears on you when you're looking at a target. So when that person is seeing you, that bright red spot just sort of draws them in even more. So I would really only recommend using this attachment on either shotguns or pistols. And even then, I don't use it on shotguns. I will only put it on the pistols, really only for my shield operators. Because shields have such horrible hip fire, you need to do everything you can to kind of bring that into a little bit more control. And while the visible laser beam still does apply to a shield user, because you have that armor in front of you, you can afford to have that there. 
and the operator is so noisy anyway with all the clanking armor as they walk around, it's not like they don't know you're already coming. So for the laser sights, I really keep them off of everything and only put them on the shield users. Again though, that's complete personal preference. Finally, let's talk about the biggest category in the game, which is the barrel attachment section. First up on deck is the silencer. Everybody knows what this does, a silencer or a suppressor offers a very, very moderate amount of recoil control, but it comes at the expense of damage reduction. So it will take more rounds to drop somebody and your fall off damage over distance will have a heavier impact. You will lose more damage over further distances. The other benefits to using a silencer would be that the tracer rounds that you fire, the little white streaks of the bullets as they shoot out, have a little bit less opacity. It's not night and day, it's just a little bit less. You're not giving as much of a threat indicator away when you're firing, and there can be some definite advantages to that. The sound does carry less overall. If you can be on the third floor of a building and you're firing on the first floor, you're probably not gonna hear those shots unless you're doing it in the stairwell connecting the floors. And so you can maintain a little bit of stealth in that way. And really, if you're playing a heavy stealth-based character, a suppressor might be the way to go. This is especially effective for roamers. Overall, it's really hard to recommend the silencer as you're reducing your damage, and anything that does that is just a really hard sell for a lot of people. The next attachment is the Compensator. The recoil compensator has been around since the game first came out. The purpose of this attachment is to increase recoil stability over time with sustained fire. So if you're prone to throwing out a lot of lead using sustained automatic fire, then this is probably going to be an attachment you'll see a lot of benefit from. The recoil stability it provides will vary from weapon to weapon and won't necessarily always be the best recoil control option. Typically what it will do is reduce the horizontal wobble as you fire. So when your recoil pattern begins to pull your weapon up, the spread to the side shouldn't be as severe. It should try to make it a little bit more vertical than it would be without it. This effect is more pronounced on some weapons versus others. Next is the flash hider attachment. This has also been in the game since launch. This is an interesting attachment. People started to realize that you can sometimes get superior recoil control out of a flash hider as compared to the compensator. Now, overall, the compensator will be the better choice for sustained automatic fire. But sometimes on some weapons, the flash hider will actually do a better job. What the flash hider is primarily designed for, though, is burst fire. So some weapons have two round burst or three round burst options, and this will really help you lock on with a lot more stability in your groupings when you do that. For weapons that don't have burst options, or even for those that do, and you just want to feather the trigger, doing that will also help you. And really what you want to do here is when you pull the trigger or, you know, click on the mouse, whatever kind of control input device you're using, you want to keep it to maybe three to five shot bursts as you do this. Now you can do this pretty rapidly and not lose much fire. Fire, it's just going to be kind of this constant feathering action. You're just going to be trying to do light trigger pulls here, just enough to fire off those three to five shots. If you use your weapon in this way, with this attachment, your shot pattern groupings are going to be much more focused in a general area. And while you'd see tighter groupings anyway, even without using that attachment, if you discipline yourself to using your weapon in this manner, you're going to see even more benefits with this attachment than you would without it. An additional benefit of the flash hider is it actually changes the pattern of the muzzle flash. This is something that you kind of tend to filter out sometimes and just ignore it as almost like white noise on the screen. But that little burst of flame, the explosion of the muzzle blast coming out of the front of the barrel can sometimes obscure your target. And what this does is it actually rotates that pattern so that it's obscured more and the area where you're aiming down your sight shouldn't have as much, or in some cases, any muzzle flash getting in the way of your shot. Now that's a purely visual change, but having that reduced obscurement can help. Next up is the muzzle brake. The purpose of this is to diminish first shot recoil. This puts an emphasis on precision. So before the update to the muzzle brake, this thing was working like a super compensator and it was just like dominating. There was no reason not to put this on any gun in the game. Now that it's been balanced to work the way it properly should, you're gonna see the most benefit from this by controlled fire. This is gonna really apply mostly to single tap weapons. So your DMRs, sniper rifle, pistols, or any automatic that you put into a single shot mode to fire in are all gonna be play styles and weapon types that benefit from this particular attachment type. In fact, I'm gonna say right out of the gate, if you use any kind of a DMR or a pistol, just go ahead and put this on here as your primary barrel attachment. Now, if you prefer to use silenced weapons because that fits your play style better, of course you can go with that, you know, that's your play style then in that case. But for superior fire mechanics, maintaining that first follow-up shot for recoil accuracy, this is the attachment to go with. 
semi-automatic weapons or when you use an automatic in semi-auto mode will benefit from this across the board. Now, while the muzzle brake does really excel at being able to group single tap shots closer together, it also comes out as a superior recoil control attachment to the compensator or the flash hider in certain situations. With any of those three attachments, the compensator, the muzzle brake, or the flash hider, you have to compare performance and see which one actually does the best job of controlling recoil on that given weapon. The final attachment we're going to talk about is the extended barrel. With this attachment equipped, damage at long distance doesn't decrease as much. In trade-off, you get extra recoil. So what this means is that you're gonna have less fall off damage and that's gonna vary per weapon, but it'll be around 10 to 20% damage increase at longer ranges. And by increase, we're not going above and beyond the stated, it's just increased from what it would have been without it. This particular attachment is going to be situational depending on your play style as well. This is definitely a trade-off attachment because it benefits you at long range, but it also hurts you at long range. You're gonna maintain that higher damage, that 10 to 20% damage range will be increased over that distance, but you're gonna have a harder recoil kick. And of course, the further out your target is, the more noticeable that recoil kick feels especially if you have it on any kind of a gun with a zoomed optic for an ACOG. That recoil is going to feel heavier. If you should need to hip fire that weapon for any reason, you're also gonna feel that recoil kick a little bit more as the spread will become a little wider. I mean, some weapons are a hard case to make an argument to place this on. For instance, Buck C8 already has unpredictable recoil patterns to begin with. Putting an attachment like this on there only makes that harder to control, and I really wouldn't see much benefit for doing that. Where things can start to get a little iffy is like if you put it on Jaeger's 416C, that's already the longest range defender weapon in the game. Now there's an appeal to maintaining higher damage at that longer range, but now if you've got an ACOG placed on there and you're engaging at the maximum ranges, you're going to feel that heavier kick. So then that becomes more about do you want to exchange the higher damage for the harder to control recoil kick. On something like the SMG-11, it's hard to make the case for it for the same kind of a reason. A lot of people use that as a pocket sniper. But it has a high rate of fire, and when you multiply that across a harder recoil kick, you're now taking out the accuracy of your pocket sniper, even though you're preserving that damage at that distance. I find that it does seem to work pretty well on the R4C, the 9mm C1, or the UMP45. The Para 308 seems to be a mixed bag, and overall, this attachment is really going to come down to your kind of play style. If you do a lot of sustained automatic fire, this is probably not going to be the best attachment for you, and I would recommend going with a compensator instead because the extra kick that's going to happen when you're firing this weapon is probably not going to be worth it. On the other hand, if you're a little bit more cautious about your firing and you do burst fire, or you feather the trigger, and you're able to better control your own recoil, plus you tend to engage at those longer ranges where you're going to see the benefit of that returned damage fall off, then this could be a good attachment for you. Now that's all of these attachments when you look at them as individual components. Of course, then you can sort of mix and match things to a certain degree. Understanding the way all of these attachments work together and how they influence the gun's mechanics are going to be the key to customizing the firing platform to your specific playstyle. If you're an aggressive player that's highly mobile with good shot discipline, then putting a flash hider for controlled recoil on bursts along with an angled foregrip, which won't feel too much of a penalty from short bursts, will work well together, allowing you to acquire targets quickly and still stay accurate while not getting too much of a penalty on recoil control. On the other hand, if you're all about turtling up inside an objective and hiding in a position to wait for somebody to step in front of you, then you may benefit more from a setup that takes something like a vertical foregrip and pairs it with either the extended extended barrel for the better damage reduction, or the muzzle brake for the more accurate shots. If you're a completely aggressive rusher and you do a lot of spray and pray, then maybe pairing up the compensator along with a vertical foregrip to help control all of that crazy recoil might be the way to go. There's also one other tool you can use to help you figure out the optimal settings for the attachments on the gun. In the operator select screen, if you look down in the lower right hand corner, you'll see a spectrograph. This is procedurally generated based on which attachments are on your gun and how they'll impact the performance. For instance, you can see the way the values are altered if you put on a vertical foregrip, and then if you put on another attachment like a compensator or a flash hider, you'll see how it changes with that. If you then go back and take off the vertical foregrip, you'll see that the changes reflect in real time. So you can then begin to get a more comprehensive picture of what's going on when you begin to combine attachments together. Again, line this up based on the kind of play style you have. 
The color spectrum shows what will happen to your shot grouping over time. Green is where your shot grouping will start, and then as you progressively fire more and more, you'll then escalate into the other color profiles through the spectrograph. That way you can see over time that your shot accuracy begins to scatter, or the drift pattern will pull to one side or the other, or it may have a more vertical orientation. Understanding how to interpret this graph will then help you figure out the best way to combine attachments to give it the kind of play style that you want for the weapon handling mechanics. This should easily help you figure out on a per weapon basis whether or not a muzzle brake, a compensator, or a flash hider are going to best fit your weapon profile. Well that wraps up the weapon attachment guide. Now if you want to know more about how the muzzle brake, the compensator, and the flash hider kind of pair against each other for various weapons because there are differences. The compensator isn't necessarily going to be the best automatic recoil control on every device. Sometimes it's the flash hider, it just depends on the per weapon basis. Then actually what I'm going to do is refer you to another YouTuber. Varsity Gaming has put together an amazing collection of footage that shows how every single weapon in the game functions with each of those three particular attachments. This shows side-by-side -side examples of them all in action, and that'll allow you to pick out a little bit better of an idea for which one you want to do. Keep in mind the examples that he shows, though, are for sustained automatic fire on a vertical control pattern only. So while a compensator may show better in his video for one gun, if your play style still reflects having a feathered action on burst fire, the flash hider may still be the superior recoil control option for you because that may fit your play style for that given firing mechanic better. But nonetheless, if you want to go check that out, I really recommend it. Here's the link for that. It's been on screen here and you can go check that out. Give him a thumbs up. He's done a good job on that. Well, that wraps up the Weapon Attachment Guide. If you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, tips, tricks, information, and more for Rainbow Six Siege, please like and subscribe. Additionally, you can follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.